Scientists agree burning oil, coal, and gas is overheating the planet. We have the technology, though, to tackle the problem. One thing that would make a difference is making the switch to electric vehicles. Home charging options might make them convenient in cities, but what if you want to drive your EV further? In this next weather investigation, WCCO's Aaron Hassan said it took a trip to the North Shore and discovered a few bumps in the road. We are taking two cars on this road trip. I'm driving the Tesla Model Y. This is the most popular EV on Minnesota roads. Our producer, Joan, is driving the Chevy Bolt. This is the third most popular EV on Minnesota roads. With a full charge, I have 303 miles of range in the Tesla, and Joan has 209 in the Bolt. While we top up, EV consultant Yuka Kukunen walks us through some of the basics. This car will automatically heat up the battery? Yep. And that will make it charge faster. Exactly. Let's go. Okay, we hit 100%. We're ready to roll. And of course, any good road trip has a good playlist. We are heading from St. Paul to Two Harbors. I mapped it. It's 191 miles to our hotel. Our Plug Share app, a popular app for EV drivers to find charging stations, shows the Moose Lake charger for Jones Bolt is offline. It's down or damaged or just out of order. So I think we have to stop in Pine City. About an hour into our road trip in 37 degree weather, my range is down to 69 percent or 211 miles. Jones is under 120 miles, but she started with less. Our change of plans led us here to this abandoned parking lot near a Walmart and gas station, where we met others charging on their way to Duluth. Normally, all the charges are close to to Walmart, yeah. but this one was like. No. Okay, so That's this is kind of a strange charging stop. A strange stop. charging stop, yeah. They say we made the right choice changing our stop. If it says out of order on here, would you take? I would believe it. <laughs> After 50 minutes of charging, we feel confident the Bolt can make it 125 miles to our lodge. But we made a lunch stop in Hinkley to supercharge my Tesla. Say bye to the car and hello. To Toby's. While we enjoy some Minnesota road trip staples, we set a timer for 45 minutes and fully charged the Tesla since we lost roughly a third of its expected range with more than half of our trip to go. Farther down the road in Duluth, we found some of the hottest EVs filling up, but again, some of the fast chargers down. And that's not the only challenge, even in a mild winter. Just ask John Sullivan with Minnesota Power, a North Shore utility company. The number one question I always have is about range and how that's impacted during the winter time. The ideal outdoor temperature for any EV battery is 70 to 80 degrees, maybe a little warmer. They can lose up to 40% of their range just from the cold. While it's above freezing during our trip, neither car is living up to its expected range. Driving slower and turning down cab comforts like heat would help. So would more working charging stations like those planned for 94 and I-35. But Sullivan assured us there are plans to fill in other gaps too. We received approval to install 16 fast chargers throughout our territory. Two of which will be in Duluth, and then a lot of them are going to be positioned in more rural areas. Like our final destination, two harbors. We made it. There's the lake. Poor Melikar manages the Lars Mon cottages near downtown. We get inquiries, um, probably not daily, but certainly weekly about our charging. They've had charging for guests for nearly 10 years. Doubling that capacity, I think, would probably be the next step. In the end, both cars used more battery range than expected for the drive. The trip was 191 miles. The Bolt's range is 209 miles, but we wouldn't have made it. The Tesla's range is 303, so we didn't need to stop, but used more energy than expected. We both stopped for 45 to 50 minutes to charge, which cost us around $10 each for the trip. While our photojournalist Mike spent 20 bucks on gas. A journey not about the destination, but about the learning curves drivers might encounter when making the switch. In Two Harbors, Aaron Hassanzada, WCCO News. Uh, keep in mind, Joan and Aaron were driving about 70 miles per hour on this trip, and that's not optimal for battery life. Also, when you drive in the city, there is regenerative braking that helps recharge your battery on the go. Tomorrow on the 4, Aaron's going to share more lessons from her road trip.